Have you ever wondered what the inside of a pinball machine looks like? Or have you ever thought about trying to make your own from scratch before? Well, stick around, and through this video, I'm gonna go through and open up some pinball machines. I'm gonna show you the insides, explain all the basics of how they work and what you need to know in order to go through and build your own from scratch. I started building my own from scratch a little while ago, been having a lot of fun, and I decided to stop and back up and just start documenting um, directly what I've been learning, because there's a lot of things that I've been able to take advantage of from a community that's out there. People have done this before me, and I've learned a ton. I've gotten way further than I ever would have on my own. But there's still a lot of little things along the way I've had to figure out for myself. And instead of just kind of writing them down and losing track of my notes, I figured I should just start recording this and just posting it up online as I do it. That'll be the be the more comprehensive way. So hit that subscribe button and follow along. Hit the little alarm icon so you know it, you're notified every time a new video comes up. And we'll walk through this journey together. As I said, there'll be multiple videos. There's no way to explain this whole process in a single video. There's just way too much that goes into it. But we're gonna start today with all the basics and then Every week or so, I'm hoping to go through and put out a new video. Basically, every time I work on my machine, I will record it, I'll edit it, I'll throw it up online, and you can follow along with me, the good, the bad, the ugly, as I go through and try to build my own pinball machine. So yeah, hit that subscribe button, do me a favor. I'm brand new to YouTube, as you probably already figured out. If my microphone's not working, or the lighting's bad, or there's just things you know I could and should be doing better, also let me know. And there's anything along the way you have any questions about, something you want me to dive into deeper, or maybe create another video on specifically, just put it down below in the comments. I'll answer through, I'll post links to the resources I've already been using, et cetera. And yeah, any topics or other ideas you have for things that I could um, be making a video on, send it my way and I'll do my best to try to do that, okay? All right, so with all that out of the way, first things first, we gotta jump into a machine and understand how it works before we can try to go through and build one of our own, right? Okay, let's do it. Okay, so Pinball 101. I'm gonna try to take all my videos from the point of assuming you know nothing about pinball machines. Better to overexplain than underexplain, right? If you're serious about trying to figure out how this works. So pinball 101. If you never really worked on a pinball machine, your first question might be, how do they even open? Okay? So may or may not be obvious, but in the coin door there's a keyhole. So hopefully you have the key. And you simply open it up. Now down inside, there's a yellow handle. Almost all pinball machines have this. Some will have a spring attached. They're supposed to have a spring attached to them to help pull it back out of the way, but some might not. And you're gonna pull this handle, and that's gonna release what they call the lock bar or lockdown bar. And that can just get pulled out, put it out of the way. And then you're gonna slide out the glass. But you gotta close the coin door before you do that. The glass is gonna hit the coin, hit the coin door. That's where that spring comes into play. Some machines are older, they've lost the spring. The handle will just kind of stay open in the way, and then you won't be able to shut the coin door. So just make sure that yellow handle is pushed back. Hopefully the spring's pulling it back. Make sure it's pushed back, and then you lock the coin door again. The glass has little plastic, um, little trays here, um, a guide that it slides in and out of. So we're just gonna pull the glass out. Put it over to the side, out of the way. Mine's gonna go over here. Okay, something you should know about pinball playfield glass. Um, it's tempered glass, it's very strong. Um, but it'll shatter into a thousand little snowy pieces if you're not careful with it. And the primary thing is don't put it down on unfinished concrete, okay? Been to too many shows and expos where people have set it down and it just, it just shatters. Um, yeah, and it's like $275, $300 a piece of glass to replace it. Um, so yeah, be careful with the glass. So take it out, put it down on carpet or like on a towel, make sure it's not gonna be hitting exposed concrete. Okay, from there, we can now get into the play field. So I wanna start showing you the internals like we talked about. All pinball machines have a basic rail system that the play field sits in and slides along. They vary a little bit manufacturer to manufacturer and era to era. What was going on in the 70s is different what's going on in modern pinball machines, but it's relatively all the same. Um, at the heart of it, you've gotta be able to lift up the play field and start to pull it out. So you're gonna lift and pull a little bit. Lots of pinball machines will have these nice, fun little metal rails here underneath that you can rest it on, okay? Some do not. Um, we'll get into the how and explain about some different places you can rest it if you need to. Now, before you really go much further, I highly recommend that you get the balls out of the pinball machine. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this play field out all the way, and then we're gonna pick it up on its hinge. And if you don't take the balls out, they're gonna start falling down and crashing into pieces of plastic and breaking things. This is where we're gonna need a close up again. So let me get in here. There's a little device right here, and this has a little item is gonna kick the ball up and kick it out into this, out of the trough, into the start lane. It's just gonna be lifting that, lifting that lever and getting all the balls to come out. 
Simpsons has five. The number of ball, balls will vary per machine from three up to 13. I mean, it can be a lot of balls. Um, mostly it's around, around four or five. Once you've got all the balls out, now it's safe to continue. So we're gonna continue pulling this. All the way up till its end, and then we can flip it up and gently rest it back on the back box of the pinball machine. This is where we start looking and seeing just what is the, <laughs> the rat's nest of wires. A Simpsons pinball party pinball machine from circa 2003, when this one was produced. Um, this is pretty typical for pinball machines from the you know, late 80s into the 90s, as far as the amount of wire, wire, even into modern machines, modern brand new ones, I'll show you. This Deadpool um, was produced in 2018. It's got a little bit of a different system. Now, I read somewhere that most pinball machines have in the neighborhood of around 3,000 feet of wire. Don't let that overwhelm you. The, the approach we're gonna take is a more modular system. It's not gonna require quite so much wire. Um, you can see there's just some pretty hefty wiring harnesses that continue all the way down at the bottom of the play field. And they're gonna go, they go back under and up into the back box, okay? The back box, I'll show you that in a second, is the brains of the computer, where the circuit boards are that control everything. In the olden days, and by olden, I simply mean pre the modern era, um, and by modern era, I mean the new modular system that came out roughly, um, boy, I have to check my facts. I'll have to um, put it down in the notes around 2012, 2013, maybe not until 2015. It's relatively new, last several years. But basically, what changes here, we're gonna put this back down, and we'll take this key, and your pinball machine should have another key for the lock at the top of the back box. We can turn this, about a half turn, that releases the back glass. Be very careful with that also, because those are expensive to find replacements. So we've got our fluorescent tube that lights everything up. And then we've got these large circuit boards. I'll lift the speaker panel out of the way. Okay. And we basically have two giant circuit boards that run everything. And you'll see the mess of wires that's coming in from the back of the machine. It comes up into these boards here across the top, these connections, through here, these headers, and down across the bottom, all of these, okay? Now this board with these large black tubes, these capacitors, that's the power driver board, as it says right there, power driver board. This sole board, this one board, is responsible for driving all the high power voltage coils in here. And we'll go back to explaining coils in a second. That's gonna be one of the core things we need to understand. And up top is um, the, the MPU, it's the board that drives the graphics. It has all the software. It's got all these computer chips. It has all the logic for the video cut sequences, the audio files, um, the logic for how rules are gonna work and how points get scored, everything else that really kind of controls and makes it all make sense as you play the game. Now, the nice thing was it was all contained in the back box, right? Nothing, no screws could fall down on top of it from underneath and short something out. The bad thing is, if something went wrong on one of the circuit boards, you're talking like a $500 replacement just if one little pin got busted or something. All right, so let's cut across to Deadpool, a more modern one. Like I said, circa 2018 is when this one came out. Same thing, coin door. Different mechanism underneath here, different latch mechanisms. So this has a different latch mechanism on the inside. It's right here. And you're gonna lift, reach in and lift this up. And then this little curve latch is what goes into the lockdown bar and holds it in place. There's two of those, one on each side. So we're gonna go through and loosen both those up. Different setup, this modern one you can see. It's got a much larger LCD display here versus that what's called a dot matrix display. The one that I'm gonna go through and make is gonna have a large LCD display also. That flips down, this opens up. Where's the circuit boards? <laughs> We've got one, and this is the brains of the, uh, of the pinball machine here. One small system has got the CPU, it's got some Ethernet um, ports that lead down to other circuit boards on the, on the pinball machine, but that's basically it. You've got your power supplies, okay? You've got a small little power driver board there, and a few wires going down. Much simpler, <laughs> much more modular. And the reason why, again, if we flip up now, I missed a ball. <laughs> I got lucky. All right, nothing broke. All right, 
So on this one, we still see a lot of wire, okay? But not quite so much. What we do see are these different little smaller circuit boards, okay? And then what's even harder to see, this blue guy right here, another one up there, okay? Now these black ones, these are all just circuit boards that are handling integrated lighting, okay? They're LED boards that are kind of large but cheap to make, and they've got LEDs that are shining up through the right places on the play field underneath. We also have really small LED boards, okay? And we're gonna be using similar things like that in our build. They're gonna be RGB, so we can control the color, control each of them individually. They're gonna be connected. <clears throat> okay, now these guys here, this is the rest of the brains that used to be on the other giant circuit boards. We have two of these, they're known as node boards. Node boards meaning they, they're a node and they work in a series. So from the back box, there was ethernet cables. One cable comes out, goes into this, and then comes out of the other port and can use down along and connects down into this one. This port, other port is empty because there's only two. So that's the end of the chain for this one. There's only two of these node boards. But together, the two node boards and the one in the back, these are, these are all the ones that handle driving the coils, managing the switches, all that type of logic. That's the approach we're gonna do. It makes it more modular. You only have to run, run wires from this board to the, to the actual mechanics versus from the back box all the way in for every single one. So it saves you a good amount of wire, okay? Still lots of work to be done, but not quite as intense. Okay, the other thing we wanna start talking about here is aside from the wiring, obviously we're gonna to have to go through and figure out like a lot of electrical, there's gonna be a lot of soldering. You can go through and use crimped quick connects, which I actually using a lot for my prototyping. For the final um, build though, we're gonna to wanna to go through and solder all those connections to make sure they're nice and, um, nice and solid and, and uh, good connections all the time. All right, so electrical. We've got a lot, a lot of electrical going on here, okay? We've got electrical for the lights. We've got electrical for all the different little toys, for the switches and measuring when they get closed and opened. We also have what are called solenoids, which are the coils that control the majority of the moving parts on a pinball machine. That's really some of the fun stuff we're gonna get into here in just a second. All right, so I wanna take just a minute and talk about flipper coils, also known as solenoids. Um, it's one of the core types of um, high powered equipment that we're gonna be working with in pinball machines once we get to actually building our play field and putting our toys and all the moving parts on. Um, it's really kind of a simple old technology that's been around for a while. Um, Harry Williams, father of pinball, he's the first one known to have added one of these to a pinball machine. Um, prior to these, pinball machines were basically just like giant Plinko machines, right? The ball would flip up around, kind of bounce around on some pins and go into different holes for points. Um, way back when, right? We're talking 100 years ago. Um, basically what a pinball um, high power coil is, it's a coil of wire. We've got different examples here, green, white, yellow, blue. They can come in different uh, sizes and shapes and different colors and wrappers. Um, but basically, this is kind of a good example. It shows you what it is. It is just a coil of wire, okay? Copper wire. Copper wire rotated around and with a different gauge, a different number of turns, um, and that affects how strong it is. What this does, when this gets energized, this coil creates an electromagnetic field which will suck in anything metallic inside its core. So what this does is this sucks in this plunger, okay? And this, for example, this plunger can then be connected to a lot of different things. This is a flipper mech, and I've got a better, better example of one here, okay? Same thing, different brand, different coil, but this is a flipper that would be on top of the, of the pinball machine, right? We'd have our piece of wood in between here, okay? And then this is the flipper. And so when we hit the flipper switch, this gets energized, the plunger gets sucked inside, okay? And it pushes the pinball machine up really, really powerfully. And that's gonna knock the ball around, okay? So it's just an assembly that has these different little pivot points, okay, to move things around. Um, this is one, this is called a vertical, vertical up kicker, or a VUK. And what this does is on the pinball play field, the ball could either kind of get knocked inside this hole, or this one's cut out from behind. The ball can come through from underneath the play field through a little subway system into here. And then the ball sits there on this little um, circle and this plunger, it all gets energized. Sorry to stay in, in view, sorry. And this plunger gets sucked up inside. It's, it's got a plastic rod on the end. So as it comes up, it's gonna knock the ball out. Okay, and the ball then gets kicked up, follows along this curve back onto the play field. Okay, this is the part that, that uh, that sits above, above the play field. I think I'm doing that upside down, sorry. Um, here's one, it's a smaller coil, less power, and it just sucks in and 
gets sucked in and has a plastic rod on top that gets goes up and stops the ball along its path somewhere. This is a drop target assembly. Okay, you'll see these umping ball machines, right? As you go through and playing with the ball, the ball comes through, hits this, the spring pulls it back down. When this gets energized, the machine resets it and pushes it back up, ready to get hit again by the ball. Okay. Now all these are gonna have numbers on this one, a 261200, 23800, bunch of numbers. Then 261200. These numbers, the first number, the 26 is the gauge of the wire, right? Higher the number, the smaller the gauge, right? And the 1200, that's the number of windings, the number of times it's wrapped around. And the general rule of thumb is the higher that second number, the less powerful a field, the less powerfully it's gonna be sucking the rod inside. So this one, 1200 is a pretty high number because all it's doing is raising up a little plastic a little plastic pole to stop the ball, right? 1200 to lift up this, doesn't need much force either to lift up this piece of plastic, okay? To kick the ball back up onto the field needs a little more, the ball's heavier, so 23800. This one is the No Williams one, the numbers are a little bit different. There's a, there's a chart that people have put out there that kind of tells what all the different numbers mean because some of them are not as straightforward. This one is a 23 gauge 800 but it also has a 32 gauge 3000 wrapped around it. This one has two different power vo um, um, voltages that it supports. One's for the initial kick of the flipper and the other one then switches over to a hold voltage, which is a lower to hold the ball once it's there, hold the flipper up. Okay, maybe a little more info than what you need to know, but basically high power coils are cool. They, collect, they create electromagnetic fields. They suck a metal plunger up and they're connected to something else. So they'll either push up a rod, They'll push up drop targets. They'll spin flippers. They do lots of different things. Now beyond that, you can also see coils like this. This teeny tiny little guy here. I'm shaking the camera, sorry. This teeny tiny little guy here, 26600, okay? But it's small, decent strength. This has just a solid core inside it already. Nothing's moving around. This has just become basically an electronic magnet, okay? So when it gets power, this becomes charged and a ball that passes in front of it will stop there and get held <clears throat> and get held into place. So you'll see these on different types of machines. Um, if you're familiar with the Adams family, you know that the thing's hand that comes out to grab the ball, it literally has one of these at the end of the finger, gets energized, grabs the ball, picks it back up into the machine, okay? If you're familiar with the high-speed getaway pinball machine, that was my very first pinball machine I ever had, a great Steve Ritchie pinball machine where you're running away from the cops. This is basically the same thing giant coil, but instead of a giant plunger getting sucked through this, this is actually set up inside the supercharger and the ball goes through there and it gets timed with the optical switch and knows when the ball comes in or right when the ball comes in, it gets a, a brief charge, just enough to attract the ball, but not hold on to it. And then it will suck the ball through and push it out the other side way faster, okay? With that then, the other thing we need to know beyond just coils, these are some examples here, the other main thing we're going to be running into is a bunch of mechanical and optical switches. So I've got a couple examples here. Pinball machines just run off very basic, simple little micro switches. Nothing fancy. And lots of them will have different wires attached to the end, like this one has this nice curved one, okay? And when the ball comes through and rolls over that, from the play field, boop, then it triggers that switch. We know the ball went through that lane, okay? These are optical switches, simple little um, infrared LEDs, right? Lights that get tr um, tripped. And whenever the beam is broken, it knows the ball has gone through that beam, can trigger a uh, trigger movement. We can use that to tell the pinball machine what's going on. Um, this is a spinner, okay? So I can show this very well. I've got the camera upside down, so gravity's not gonna help me, but it spins. And every time it spins around, it's hitting this switch. Okay, and as that switch gets hit, obviously, right, that it triggers the number of times you're spinning the spinner. Okay, so really, at the end of the day, pinball machines are just a big collection of very, very simple machines. There's just a lot of them, and we've got to take the time to know where to put them, how to connect them, make sure we have software. So we've talked about the electrical side of things, some of the mechanical side of things, and there's also going to be a lot of software we have to go through and do. The good news is we don't have to build that software from scratch either, okay? There's people who have gone through and created open source platforms. The one that I'm using is called Mission Pinball, uh, Mission Pinball frame, Framework or MPF. There's a few different options out there. That's what I'm gonna be using. 
I'm still learning a lot of it. I don't understand it. I'll be perfectly honest. There's a lot of things I'm still learning about it. But it basically works off a system of a bunch of YAML config files. It's very simple to under, understand as long as you have some good instructions. And there are some good tutorials out there. So I'm going to put a link in um, the, the description below for that coil chart in case you ever need to bookmark that and have reference so you know which coils um, are known for what, what power, etc. Um, yeah. All right. So that's going to pretty much cover it for this video. Um, consider it a basic pinball 101. I just wanted to go through and open up a machine, show you the internals, give you a basic explanation of what type of things we're going to be dealing with so we know what it is we're going to need to be creating, right? Um, again, it's a bunch of simple systems, really, if you think about it. Not a whole lot has changed or advanced in pinball over the last, you know, 50 years. Um, a lot of simple machines put together that make one really fun, extraordinary game that you can't really find anywhere else. I love retro games. There's so many other things out there in this world that I find entertaining, but there's just something about pinball and the physicality of it and knocking that ball around and seeing it interact and feeling that, the feedback that I just, I love it. Anyway, so for the following videos, we're gonna go through and we're gonna start walking through now every step, creating a cabinet from scratch. We'll talk about the prototyping and designing a play field and then prototyping those pieces on, on the wood, the white wood as it's known as we're prototyping our own pinball machine. We'll talk about the software. We'll get to the point where we actually have what's called the lower third or the Italian bottom working, where we've got our flippers and our slingshots going back and forth. We'll have it connected to power. So when we push those buttons, we'll see the ball flipping around. Um, can't wait for that. It's gonna be exciting to see us actually moving the ball around on our play field. Um, and we'll get into a lot of different things. We'll be 3D printing out custom pieces for this. We're going to go down to our lo local makerspace and get on their CNC machine, the X-Carve, and teach you all about how to use that. Um, Fusion 360, we'll be going through and having tutorials on how to go through and do your own modeling, some of your own CAD and toolpath layout. Um, a lot of fun stuff. We'll create our own artwork and Illustrator and other vector programs, Inkscape. Uh, we'll learn how to use a laser engraver to cut out the plastics and engrave some cool things in acrylic. We've got lots of fun things planned. So anyway. Please stick around, subscribe again, like this video if you liked it, and again, leave comments. Let me know what you hated, what I rambled on too much about. Um, give me feedback on how I can improve, okay? Until next time, thanks guys, bye-bye.